determined Green Day's identity after its 2 0 start. And Rogers told the Pat McAfee show on Sirius X and Mad Dog Sports Radio. I think it's ridiculous. We're two weeks in. You know, let, let, let things play out. It's, teams don't figure out their identity until weeks in the season. You know, it's a bad agent. Like, it takes a while to figure out what kind of team you are. Obviously, we had a ton of injuries yesterday or two days ago. MLB in the sixth inning to nasty. The Phillies 5 1 all the Washington runs off. Now, no, the game would have been twin bill. Commissioner Rob Manfred says fans will be allowed in the NLCS and World Series. Major League Soccer announced the rest of its regular season, which will conclude November 8th. From the Serious X and Newsroom, this is Bob Gallerstein. If it's happening in sports, it's happening on Serious XM. some of the intricacies, player moves, and everything else, is this type of position something you went after, or did the Arizona Coyotes come after you? Welcome to the show. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, well, first of all, Mike Ruff, I got, I got a lot of uh, respect for him. You, you fought in the NHL and played a hard, difficult role, so uh, I always had a lot of love for you as a, as a player. Uh, but uh, first off, you know, it was I, I got interviewed by another NHL team, and, and I always kind of thought I'd be with the Blues. I've been with the Blues for years. It kind of opened my eyes, and and uh, when I was done, I, you know, the Arizona Coyotes picked up the phone and called me, and we started this process and going down and meeting everybody and you know getting involved in it. And uh, there was a you know there was a lot of from the NHL community saying you can't win down the desert. They, they haven't done it in 25 years, and. I went to uh, Vegas to meet with the owner, uh, Mr. Morello, and uh, I was convinced of his conviction uh, to build a Stanley Cup winner and uh, his commitment. That was the thing that sold me. Uh, that was the, the, the deal maker. Because when you're in the interview process, you're not they're, they're interviewing you, but you're also interviewing them, and you want to make sure you work for good people. Um, and uh, and I, I love what he stood for. I loved how he had owns 44 different companies uh, that he takes out of bankruptcy and bills, and he's never given up on anyone. So he's a tremendous man, and um, it's a pleasure to work for him. Well, Bill, uh, first, first off, thank you for the kind words. Uh, I will say I also, I, I, I'm a little overweight, but I'm available. If you need anything, <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know that. No, you know, I. Congratulations again for the week there. Um, I'm just curious, we had Bill Zito on, and you know, we've been speaking to some GMs that, just like yourself, that have just gotten the kit, and you're getting in there. What does it look like? Because it's so hard to say, all right, well, what's the first thing you can do? you got to get in there and get yeah. familiar. What, but what does that, what does that yeah. mean? What does that look like? Uh, yeah, it, it, it happens for you. Know, difference. Yeah, it happens, and it's a great question because it's, it's overwhelming. Uh, the good news for me is that I was pretty adept in, in a 90-page report uh, about what I would what I would do. You know, like what, what would I do on the scouting side? Like what structure would I use? What budget would I use? You know, all these things that were important to me. How would you develop? And you know, I, I spent probably two weeks in my office and I didn't come out. 
and I just I wrote it um, and I hadn't been through the interview process before so you know it was in my head I just had to get it out on paper on my beliefs and principles from from not only playing from being assistant coach to, to coaching to being in the American League to, to scouting you know and, and all these things were in my head and I just got them out on paper um, and yeah, I'm one of those guys that always working on principles and developing so when I came through the door you know, there's all this stuff coming at you, but it was actually simple in some, in some ways because I studied the organization so long. I'm like, this is what we do for it. Boom, boom, boom. And because of the, my, what I do, you know, for the Blues, I know every scout in the NHL. I know all the hockey personnel. I know all the hockey ops guys. So for me, it's like, it's okay, snap this guy in here, do this. Like, this is what we're, we're right now in the first phase of adding good people to our organization, adding good people to good hockey people that are driven. Um, you know, and then tomorrow we're going into our meetings and we're, we're starting to, to look at our team through different different eyes and uh, views from the staff and how we're going to, what's the next step we're going to take. So for me, it's been easy. Now, the, the 600 touches I got from people, that's the hard part. Um, <laughs> that's overwhelming, you know. It's just, they just come in all day long. And, and, and it's, it's awesome because at the same time, those are people that have worked around for you that cheer for you too, so...
from a 